Hey guys, welcome back. If you guys uh, are new to Project Pro, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Okay, so we're going to be doing language detection, something different than last time. Okay, so this is multi-class classification. You guys see the 17 languages right there? Download this from Kaggle. I'll show you guys how to unzip it later. Okay, so you guys see already the language is going to be the target, Y, and then X is the features, text. You guys, so it's pretty self-explanatory. Anyways, guys, let's jump into the code. You guys also, if you guys are on a Windows, you guys can also install a keyboard if you guys know other languages. Um, because we'll get to that in an example to test the model. Okay, but before we do, this is how you can unzip it if you haven't unzipped it, and then import these files right here. Basically, the exclamation mark unzip file path. Read it with pandas. Okay, there's the head. You guys see from the data frame, the info. And then x equals text, y equals language. We're going to transform it with the label encoder, the target. Then we're going to pre-process with re, the text. We're going to pre-process the data. Okay. And uh, we're going to do the cap, cap, counter vectorizer. We're going to fit and transform it to the array. Then we're going to print the shape and the len of the def list from the appended text. And then we're going to test train split like we always do in machine learning. Here's what I'm talking about, guys. If you guys want to implement your own algorithm, feel free to do it. In fact, if you guys know how to adjust the parameters, go ahead and do it. This is just multi-class classification. You can use the logistic regression. You can use naive Bayes. You can use Adaboost. You can use so many. In fact, I experimented with some algorithms. You may get higher results with a naive Bayes or an Adaboost. I'm just saying. However, we're going to do logistic regression because that's very common. But I'm just saying there might be some higher accuracy even. Even higher than 95%. Okay. The F1 score, and then if you guys want to do a confusion matrix and you guys know how, import that too. There's the F1 score, and then we're going to pass macro as the parameter, remember? Because this is multi-class. This is not binary. Okay, and then we're going to score Y test and Y pred, 95%. And then we're going to fit and transform to the array. Then we're going to predict X. You guys see language? I named it Ada, remember? I should have named it Logistic or something, but you guys can name the variables whatever you want. Remember, guys, it's your own code. Predict, inform, inverse transform. Basically, that's what I like to call decoding a little bit. And then, remember the def function in Python? Prediction, right here, and then the string of whatever you're going to write, you see? The language is in Spanish. The prediction is in Spanish, right? Which is correct. The prediction is in English, right? Okay, and then the prediction is in Russian, right? Okay, and then here's the thing, guys. You guys can save your model if you guys want. Name it whatever you want. Dump it, the model, right? Name it whatever you want. You guys can save it as job lib. You guys can save it as pickle. There's many things we can do. And then here's what I'm talking about, guys. And then you guys can see it right over here. Remember, guys, the file path. Yours might be set up differently, and the files might go uh, different places, remember? So uh, remember, you guys might have higher accuracy, I would tend to think, if you guys had naive base. However, guys, there's one thing I wanted you to be aware of. If you guys want to make a Streamlit app like I've done before, I want you to be aware some platforms do not accept uh, Naive Bayes uh, as a pickled. So you may have to skip that one. Even though a Naive Bayes has the highest um, 
the highest, I mean, uh, the highest accuracy usually of most data sets and the least bias, basically the most true positives and least false positives is, the, is a naive Bayes because the way it assumes data. That's why they named it the naive Bayes, which is kind of funny, right? Okay. So anyways, guys, uh, I want you guys to be aware, just just like uh, if you deploy a model, you have to keep updating the model and retraining it on new data, right? Because then we get into ML ops, remember? The life cycle to complete the model because of bias, right? Inaccurate, bogus predictions, either from making too many predictions, too much time has gone by, or the model went stale, so many reasons. Either way, it doesn't matter in the end. You need to retrain the model on new data and do hyperparameter tunings. Although, I don't think a hyperparameter tuning is necessary given how accurate these are. And Although, you guys might want to feel free to do all 17 languages. And remember, F1 score is a, is a more accurate score than an accuracy score, remember? Because it's counting how many it got right. Macro and precision. Okay. Because what mo good is a model if it only has a 5% F1 score but has an 80% accuracy? Because, you know, accuracy and classification really doesn't mean that too much in the end. It's usually those F1 score or ROC scores for binary. Even as a machine learning engineer, we are less on the technical. I mean, we're less on the data science side and more on the technical. So it's always good to still keep in touch with data science as well. But in the end, technicality uh, does go a long way. Okay. And uh, remember, if you guys want to uh, deploy this on another app, um, another uh, platform, uh, you guys are going to need to do uh, hyperparameter tunings when it's in production, most likely. And uh, retrain it on new data as well. But just for now, it doesn't need a hyperparameter tuning. In production, it most likely would. And uh, stay tuned. Feel free to uh, hit like and subscribe. Remember, we got a lot of stuff at Project Pro. Check out some of my other videos on Project Pro. Project Pro, the only solution for solved industrial grade projects.